you. If you can get this idea into your minds, into your souls, into your thought process, that there are those of us in this place right now who sit here at relative ease. God hates you. God's wrath, God's indignation, God's anger is directed to you more than some who are in hell right at this moment. You say, can that be? Yes! Because some of you have sinned in the face of greater light. God's Word says, to whom much is given, much is required. That servant who knew his master's will and didn't do it will be beaten with greater stripes. There are some of you, you have heard the Gospel. You have heard the truth. You have mothers or fathers or wives or husbands who have prayed for you. You have a Bible in your hand. And you know what? You have provoked God more than some who have lived in past generations in inland China or Central Africa. Because you have far more light. And God's hatred towards you is stirred. His indignation is stirred far more than for those who are there. And the only thing that keeps you out of hell right now, the only thing, is God's will to keep you there. God's forbearance. There is nothing else. There is no promise. Because the covenants of promise, the promises that are found within the covenant in this book, they are yea and amen in Jesus Christ alone. But you don't believe the promises of the covenant. And you have no part of the mediator of the covenant. You walk over a rotten covering. The measure of your sins is filling up. And that moment is going to come when God is not going to abide you to stay upon this earth one moment longer. Not one moment longer. And it is a fearful thing. And as I study this, I sit at my desk and I... Constantly thinking of my children is a fearful, fearful thing, but it is a reality. And preachers who will not preach on this, they're not faithful to you. Because God's Word says this. Oh, the, the series on heaven was glorious. It took me to levels. This one is fearful. We lack, by and large, a sense of fear of God in our assemblies. The weeping and the mourning have long since departed many of the churches in the United States of America. The fear of God, the trembling. Because by and large, we've lost the doctrine of hell in our country. God is love, and He is but we have a lopsided theology today. The third thing I would say about hell is its suitability. Do we think it's too severe? We, can t we will think it's too severe if we are too man-centered in our thinking. I was thinking... I love missions. My desire, my heart and soul is to eventually be on the foreign mission field permanently. I love to read the missionary biographies. But I look around today and I see very few in our generation that are willing to do what they did in the days of Adoniram Judson or William Carey or Hudson Taylor who are willing to go off to the foreign lands. You know why? Because they could not stand that among the heathen, God's glory was not being exalted. They couldn't sleep at night. Carrie would stand for hours working on shoes and stare at maps, thinking about the, the heathen that were passing off into eternity with no knowledge of Christ, no knowledge of the Gospel. They wanted God to be glorified among the nations. What happens in the U.S. today? Young men and young women run off to the mission field. 
You know it. If you've studied the numbers in the Southern Baptist Convention, you know it. The average stay on the foreign mission field is one term. They come home, it's all over. You know why? Because God's glory is not the main thing. Their comfort is. And we live in a generation that you know it. God's glory is not the main thing. We drive down our highways. God is the greatest reality in all the universe. Drive down the highways. Where's God? Where is He on the billboards? Where is He on the talk radio? Where is He on the television? Where is He? God's glory doesn't matter anymore. But hell wakes us up to it. Hell stares this humanistic mindset straight in the face. And as one has said, it is like a brutal claw that just tears through the fabric of our humanistic thinking. It is exactly that. We need to hear about this. And furthermore, the doctrine of hell, it shows us it shows us that our view of sin our views of sin I don't know exactly what is happening, but we can think. One of the ladies of our church had her purse stolen. We have people come in off the street, eat at our church. Prostitutes, crack addicts. One of them stole my wife's purse. We look at that, and our mindset today is, Oh, look what they did to Ruby. We get to the point in our generation where self-esteem, man's importance, man's happiness, there's such a self-centered view, such a humanistic, the horizontal plane is where we view sin. We tend to forget that when we sin, When God's law says, thou shalt not steal. It is not ultimately you I violate when I sin against you. It is God who gave that law. It is His law that is broken. You remember how Joseph said, Oh, not how can I do this sin against Potiphar. How can I sin? When Potiphar's wife was trying to seduce him. How can I do this sin? Before God. In Psalm 51, David is not preeminently sorrowing over the fact that he had killed Uriah or committed adultery with Bathsheba. He looked up to God. Oh God, before you, before you I have sinned. The doctrine of hell is a wake-up call to us that our sin is not ultimately against one another. It is ultimately against God. And the doctrine of hell wakes us up to the fact that we have, we have made God into some little man-centered image as well. We see God primarily, oftentimes, for what He can do for us. God is mainly there to answer my prayers. God is mainly there to take care of my problems. God is mainly there to help me with my financial difficulties. Mainly there to help heal my marriage. Mainly there to take care of me. He's like, we make Him into this celestial Santa Claus who's at our beck and, and call to do what we call upon Him. Just recently, I had a woman email me. Would you please pray for me? I don't feel that I have gotten all the riches that I think I should have in becoming a Christian. That's, that's the mindset today. That's where we come up with a, a God who's all about our health, our wealth, our prosperity. But again, the doctrine of hell 